All right, hello everybody. This is Sergio, founder of Run Your Mission and founder of the Momentum Sessions. And today we have a special pop-up interview with the one and only Luis Angel. Now, Luis Angel is an uh, international best-selling author. How to remember? How to how to remember names and faces? Amazing book, which actually helped him become the first superhuman champion on Fox. Now, Luis is an outstanding person. This guy is amazing, and he's amazing because he wasn't always um, gifted at memory. He actually struggled with it in his past, and he went from that to being a superhuman, like a superhuman on Fox, which is crazy. So here he is, Luis. Uh, just tell us a quick little background story about um, why you used to struggle with memory and, and how you became a superhuman at it. Right. Well, uh First of all, thanks, Sergio, for having me on this, man. We've done, you know, uh, another one before where I just dive, dove right into the memory aspect of, of things. Uh, so thanks a lot for bringing me back on to one of these uh, these sessions with you. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be here. Um, but, uh, yeah, so how I got on, 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 you know, this journey, this path of, of personal growth and eventually it led me to be on this show, Superhuman, on Fox, it was, it was definitely a... <laughs> long journey where I it was a lot of ups and downs and and uh, you know in high school I struggled I had a 1.0 GPA my freshman year I think it was even lower that's like me weighing it in with you know PE and and, and football so that rose my GPA slightly um, but uh, actually with, with that being said I got kicked out of my football team my sophomore year because I just had really bad grades my freshman year uh, so it, you know, I kept struggling, kept kept uh, you know getting Fs and Ds and and uh, repeating classes just to be able to graduate. Eventually, I did graduate just because I did so much extra work that if I would have just done it from the beginning, um, you know, I would have been in a much better position later on. But yeah, I just kept struggling, and and um, when I got to college, I was like, okay, things are gonna be different. I'm gonna get straight A's. I'm gonna just do uh, really good from this point forward. And that's not what happened, right? Because guess what? If you go into a situation with the exact same blueprint that you had, you know, when you were in a negative situation, then do you think that things are going to be different? You know, it's, they're probably not going to be, right? If you go with the exact same plan. So I went with the exact same plan. What was that plan? It was not being able to focus in school, not being able to focus while I was reading, while I was paying, you know, trying to pay attention to my professors, um, not doing my work, not, you know, just all these things that I, had in in high school and I kept getting bad grades I kept failing I kept dropping out of my classes I got kicked out for a semester in college so it was really bad in school to the point where I was like I need to fix this I need to shift this uh, you know this this path that I'm heading towards of just continuing to do bad in school and overall in life as well um, I was struggling in a lot of different areas of life but it wasn't until I, I got into the personal development field, I connected with like-minded individuals, and I ran into you know this product, a memory course by my mentor, Ron White, who, who was also on the show. For those of you that saw the show, um, he was on the show with me, so that alone was uh, pretty amazing to be there with the person that kind of led me to this path of, of personal growth and, and memory improvement. It was pretty amazing. But once I got it, I immediately went to action, right? I got, got into action mode. I applied what I learned. From his program and I went from having bad grades to getting straight A's I went from at my job working at a satellite TV company from you know I almost getting fired really because I kept forgetting my tools forgetting what I had to do next to getting a promotion becoming the youngest technician to hold that position that I had at that time and uh, just overall my life you know changed I went to Tony Robbins events and I've done the firewalk eight times now I met you Sergio I met your whole family man I've been to Canada with you guys celebrating New Year's you know, I just started surrounding myself with like-minded individuals that wanted to do better for themselves and and uh, you know and, and and their family and the friends and the people around them. So, um, yeah, it was a, a long journey to to get to this point where I'm at now, and it's, it's I feel like it's just the beginning. Like this show, it's pretty much just set the tone for and and affirmed everything that I believed and that I visualized like on this road and uh, now it's just you know get to work time go, go and, and continue to work and continue to grind and improve every area of my life that's amazing Luis that's that's honestly such an amazing story because to go from having struggled with memory to becoming one of the best in the world like it wasn't like you were just average with memory lots of people get average grades they get C's and B's you're failing because your memory you almost got fired because you forgot your tools 
to becoming a superhuman. How did you land yourself on that show? How did you even um, get uh, asked to be on Superhuman? Right. So it was, um, I, I mean, all over the past few years, I've been competing in memory competitions. You know, once I saw that I could improve my grades, I I started teaching other people. And then at the same time, I started to see like, okay, can I take this to another level? Can I compete? Because I, I started to hear about these memory competitions. Excuse me. And I was like, I went to my first competition in uh, 2012. And when I went there, I saw that there were other people out there that did what I did. I was like, I wasn't the only, you know, nerd out there that could memorize all this stuff quickly. There's people out there that were way better than I was, right? I was pretty good compared to the people, you know, back at home. But when I got to this competition, these are the best in the entire nation. I was like, man, I suck <laughs> compared to these people. However, that was motivation for me to get better and, and for me to see that there was growth. That was still potential for growth, even though... I had already started to get better grades in school. That, that was still, I was barely scratching the surface, right? I was barely getting started. Uh, so from that point forward, I, I've now gone to a bunch of different competitions, multiple USA memory competitions. I've taken a team there, gotten gold medals there with my teams. And um, I've gone to competitions around the world, Australia, uh, Spain, you know, I've gone to um, Taiwan. I've got like all over the place, right? Competing in these international memory competitions. So. Uh, the show actually found out because I've, I've been traveling to all these different places and I compete. Uh, so the producers, they contacted me a few years ago. They reached out to me. And, uh, you know, at first it was with a different network, but uh, they didn't pick it up for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why. They probably just didn't like me. <laughs> you know, I'm this bald Mexican kid. Like, oh, no, he, he's a schmuck. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't pick it up at first. But, um, you know, once it came back around a year later, which was January of last year, 2015, um, they, you know, they said, hey, this show's back up. They're, it's going to be with a ne different network. They didn't tell me which one it was at that point, but now we know it's on Fox. Um, and they're like, it's a new network, bigger network, going to be seen by millions, <laughs> millions more people than the original network was going to. Uh, you know, uh, show it too. So that was pretty interesting when when I first heard that. And then, uh, so I submitted some videos, submitted some some things that they wanted me to submit, and uh, they liked me. And then I went through the process. It was pretty much a six month long process from that point forward. And we shot the show in June. Um, and and yeah, and you know, even up to after after June, um, I still didn't know if it was going to air or not until like a few weeks before it aired. So, um, you know, I had to bottle up the secret for, for a pretty, pretty long time. Yeah. Yes. And how many views did the show get? Did, do you know the numbers roughly? Yeah, this show got, um, so the, the actual ratings were 3.5 million, uh, like live, that actually tuned in to watch it. However, I had, at my own, like, I had two parties here. I had uh, over 50 people at my two parties. I know that when you guys were watching, you guys were Snapchatting me. Oh, you yeah, know, like, I'm not fun. like, you know, you guys had a you know nice little group at your house. So I, I would be still being a conser at a conservative rate, man. I'm saying around 7 million tuned in to watch it live. Uh, and then millions, millions more have watched it online. And um, yeah, so a lot of people tuned in. <laughs> That's, um, that's unbelievable, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, um, you're saying uh, just earlier that you compete all around the world, China, um, Taiwan, uh, Spain, Australia. What are some of the rankings that you've gotten in the different competitions? Because I know you've got, you've placed pretty well in a bunch of different ones. And what are the events that you've placed in too? Yeah, so I've definitely i like i said my first year i sucked so i was definitely near the bottom so it wasn't like i just came and i was number one from the beginning um and i've actually i never won a memory competition before so that's that was actually one of the reasons why i didn't think that i would even get this show because i was like there's people that were way better than me in this memory world even like last year um so i was like i'm not gonna get this right because there was other people that were submitting stuff just like i was but um yeah so i I've competed in the one that I've done the best in was in Australia. I love Australia. I want to go back, Melbourne. But uh, I know there's some people out there from the GYLS community that are from Australia. Shout out to all of you. Um, so they, yeah, I competed there. I got a, a gold medal position in in, in uh, names and faces and abstract images. I actually broke the Australian record in that competition in that event in, in uh, abstract images. 
Uh, I'm not Australian, so it's not an official <laughs> record, but uh, but it was pretty cool just to be able to do that. Um, and I got a few silver positions, a few bronze. Overall, I got second place. Just literally, if I would have memorized a few seconds faster a deck of cards, I did. I did it in two minutes at that competition. But if I would have just done it like a few seconds faster, I would have gotten first place, which is, I was pretty bummed out about. Uh, you know about that. But uh, so it was the best position that I've gotten so far at a competition. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, the best one you know, up to this point. It was uh, the Australian one. That's incredible. Yeah. Now, your book, let me go back to me, How to, Rem <laughs> How to Remember Names and Faces, International Bestseller. What does this book teach us when we read this? Obviously, it says How to Remember Names and Faces. <laughs> um, That's it, man. But how can people um, use this in their daily life? Like, how right, so... So this is essentially, so I was looking and I was, before I, I got down to actually writing this book and putting this book together, um, I was thinking of, of just doing a generic memory book and there are so many of those out there, but I was like, no, I want more of a practical a book, more of a, like a, not just a how to, there's a lot of those out there, but an actually how to, and now do it, you know, book. Um, so I teach you the how to's and the how to's are really simple. I mean, you, what we do as memory people and I have videos out there that teach this is we just create stories right we're creative storytellers i say the secret to memorization is visualization if you can visualize what it is you want to memorize you have a much better chance of retaining that information long term so um i teach you how to do that like from the beginning from like the intro you know chapter and then everything else is essentially just names and faces you literally just go through it and actually put this to practice right there and then like as i'm guiding you through it and you actually go through um, how to memorize names and faces. So uh, that was the concept behind it. And, and I got it from doing like so do so doku, what is it, so doku uh, puzzles and crossword yeah. puzzles. I'm like, these are essentially uh, just workbooks. Like you actually just, you have to work in order to get to the end result. Um, it's not just a passive book where you just read on how to do, you know, crossword puzzles. You actually have to do the work. So I mixed it with an act, a how to and an actual, like, you know, get to work book. So uh, that's the premise of this book. So yeah, that's pretty much you learn how to do it and then you do it. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. Now you've been doing a lot of stuff with memory. You, you train some high school kids. You have a little group there. You've been doing some speaking engagements. What's yeah. ultimately your mission? Like, wh why is why do you do this? Like, what what's your mission with your memory? Right. So, uh, I mean, you run your mission every day. I love your company's name, right? Run your mission. I remember when we were just talking about that back at Juwal Less. I think it was our first year, my first yeah. year, your second, and um, you were just starting up this this concept of running your mission. You're like, man, I want to help people find their missions, and that was an aha moment for me. I was like, what, what's my mission, right? I have this company and I have these things I want to do, these goals I want to accomplish, but I, I really, I, haven't, I don't think I've sat down to actually write down a mission statement for what I really want to do. Um, so that's a really good question. I think right now, um, or I know right now that my mission for what I want to do in the next several years, and I visualize this every single day, um, it's, it's really to create, my company's called Accelerated Empowered Mind, so really to just teach individuals of all ages how to learn things much more quickly than they normally do in an accelerated you know, manner and apply that to their lives right away. Not wait, not prolong it, not learn it and then say, okay, I might use it in a few years from now, right? But no, that's that's one of the reasons why I got this book done the way it is, uh, why it is set up because I teach you fast and quickly and then go to work, right? You apply it. So that's my main goal with my company and with what I want to do in the future is just teach people how to learn something quickly and then apply it right away, right? Do it now because that's how you really get things done is by doing it now. And it doesn't have to be perfect. However, you still got to get it done in order to be, uh, you know, better than you are right now. So, so yeah, that's, that's my mission statement right there. Man, that's amazing. I wish the world had more people running their mission like you. That's an, that's an amazing mission. Now, speaking about AE mind, accelerated empowered mind, Accelerated mind makes sense. Your your mind's working more efficiently. You're performing better. What, why did you throw empowered in there? And what does an empowered mind mean to you? Yeah, empowered mind is just overall, not just memory, not just learning, but overall having the right mindset. When I do my workshops with my students at, in high schools, you guys all saw that I work, uh, for those of you that saw the Superhuman show, you saw that I work with, with high school kids, right? In particular, there's one school in, in Los Angeles, uh, Bell High School. These kids 
essentially they are in a very similar situation that I was in when I was growing up. You know, I didn't grow up in the best environment. I grew up around gangs and um, around bad influencers. Um, I, I grew up with, you know, people doing drugs and alcohol and all these different things. I had family issues, uh, you know, police going to our doorstep. Uh, every single week for different, you know, various different reasons. I was never the culprit in any of that stuff. I was never involved in any of that. However, I saw it and I grew up in that environment, right? Um, so these kids that I work with, they, they're definitely in that very similar environment uh, that I grew up in. And, um, you know, when I go there, I teach them how to not just memorize, not just learn things quickly. That's, they, I can teach them the tools, but they, if they don't have the drive to really apply that, into school and every other area of life, and they're not going to, right? I can know how to memorize a 1,000 digit number in a few minutes, but if I don't have the drive to wanna to actually go out and do that, then I'm not going to, right? It's just like anything in life. So um, I teach them, a lot of what I teach them, it's, it's, it's mainly really how to get their mindset right, right? How to think positively about what, the, what their out outcomes are, how to find their own missions in life, how to rewire their brain so that they can go out and, and face their fears and, and accomplish their, their own goals. So um, that's what Empowered really means and, and why I threw that into my company name. It's because it's not just about learning, it's about an overall empowerment of the mind. Man, I love that. Like, I, I love that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where can we find AE Mind? I know you got a website. Your YouTube channel has hundreds of thousands of views. Mm -hmm. um, you got, you're all over Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Where, where can we find you? Everywhere, man. You can find me AEMind.com, AE Mind, like the brain mind. And yeah, you just go on there. You'll find everything about you know, what it is that I teach and videos and everything like that. Find me on Snap. I know I, I post a bunch of motivational stuff on Snap too and some things, family things. I guess I was with my little nieces. Um, you guys saw them on the show and I was just snapping with them, just playing with them. They're showing everybody the chihuahuas and I was getting messages back from people like, oh, you know, the cute little chihuahuas. And I'm like, well, I'm not cute. Well, I'm not, you know, but, um, you know, people are just looking at my snaps and my videos. So, yeah, you can find me, A-Mine, you can find me everywhere uh, just by using that. That's, that's pretty much the handle everywhere, right? A E mine. That's Instagram, Snapchat, yeah. Facebook. The works. Right. Um, we have a couple of live viewers, and we have Nate Thompson. He commented, "It's a great point. Even if you aren't the best, keep going, keep trying, and don't give up." Right. We've actually, Definitely. got a couple of questions uh, lined up from a couple of people that posted in advance. Um, so the first one: Did you have a specific strategy to win the show? And if so, what was it for the superhuman show? <laughs> did you go in with a strategy or did you show up, know you had it, and then just did your right. thing? Right. No, I didn't practice. I just showed up and I was like, wait, I'm doing a show in five minutes? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no. No. Well, I actually, I know people that, that that is their strategy. They just show up and whatever happens, happens. Uh, that wasn't the case for me. I, I could have done it that way and I do it like in certain situations, but it was this was... Definitely, there was a lot more on the line, <laughs> so I wanted to be a little bit more prepared for this show. You know, it wasn't just you know me going out there and performing. It was uh, a lot more. Uh, you know, as you guys saw, there was money, and then there was also you not looking like a fool in front of millions of people watching that. <laughs> Excuse me, but um, uh, yeah. So how I prepared for this was, I had a plan. I definitely, definitely did. I I researched because I knew this was not a competition of just who can memorize the most you know, the, the you know, most amount of information because it wasn't just a memory competition. It was an overall competition of, of yes, you do your demonstration, right? But then you also have to entertain the audience and you also have to connect with the audience and you have to, sh you know, be a showman up there. That, that's really what I prepared for more than memorizing people's names. I did that and I knew how to do that. And I definitely prepared for that. However, the majority of the time I spent preparing on how to uh, connect with the audience, right? Um, you know, what was I going to do? I researched heavily on things such as, like, it had nothing to do with with this show. I researched, like, you know, uh, boxing matches, and not necessarily I didn't watch boxing matches or MMA matches, but I, I, uh, I researched, like, the, the profile videos of the the athletes, right? The boxers or the, or the fighters or whatnot, right? Like, why is it that I want to root for this person and not this other person? That's essentially what I... Um, what, what I was researching and I watched you know, a lot of those types of videos like what made me connect with this person instead of this other individual so when I was researching that and, and you know jotting notes down I was kind of uh, 
seeping that into my unconscious mind so that once they went to shoot my background story and I was up on the stage and, and talking with, with uh, you know, Cal Penn and Mike Tyson and all these other people, I was, uh, you know, showing essentially how I was, I was um, you know, portraying myself all 100% factual, but I was definitely showcasing and highlighting different points points of my life and, and, and uh, you know, the life of my family members, so on and so forth, so that I can connect better with the audience. So it was definitely a lot of strategy behind what it is that I did up there. and. Um, uh, even my demonstration, I could have easily just gone up and said, oh, yeah, you're Joe. Oh, yeah, you're such and such. Oh, you're this. And that would have been cool. I would have done my challenge. I got it in 100%, right? However, I did more than just that. I, I was definitely, uh, you know, saying I was doing a lot of hand gestures and I was uh, being very expressive with what I was doing. They didn't show a lot of that, like, when they actually aired it. But if you would have been there in the studio audience, audience you would have seen, like, I was definitely more animated than uh than somebody who was just being there just to focus on the challenge right so i added you know just more to it and i guess all of that combined is what led me to have this result so i had a plan and i had a strategy going into it the main strategy was i just want to do well on my challenge winning would be a bonus right um so initially i thought that ron my mentor had one when they said memory master and then when they finally said, which was, I would have been perfectly fine with it. He was my mentor. So I was about to go and congratulate him. However, when they said my name, I was like, I was first dumbfounded. I was like, what? I really won. Um, and then, you know, and then it kind of just sunk in and uh, it was, it was awesome just to be there with my family and everybody else. So uh, yeah, I definitely planned for this, I guess, uh, you know, short to keep the answer short, I, I planned and I prepared for the overall outcome of this show. That is amazing, man. <clears throat> That's incredible. Um, Nate has a couple of other questions. He posted a bunch in a row. Um, yeah. What's your overall goal with your gift of memory? Where do you want to take it? Uh, I want to just continue to teach others. I can I teach right now in high schools and I do videos, so I just want to continue to do that and continue to uh, spread the message of just not again not just memory but overall mind empowerment. Um, my main goal, and this is something that a lot of like the, there are a lot of memory people out there that that do this and also teach this um and a lot of them just focus on memory which is great that's awesome like my but add <laughs> my focus 5 10 20 years from now is it's going to kind of deviate from just memory and focus more on on really just advancing humanity and society i want to go into space and i want to have my own space company i model after you know a lot of great individuals out there uh that's you know like an elon musk that that wants to go out into space and has his own space company so iron man right you know sergio that's one of my favorite characters right there um but iron man you know I, elon musk and and, and all, a lot of other people like uh, jeff bezos who has his own space company so um i want to have my own space company in the future i want to invent something that's going to revolutionize the way we do things i don't know what it is yet but i want to do that um and uh, you know so that's where i want to take this you know several years uh, from now that's amazing and you got the galaxy shirt <laughs> <Right here. laughs> go with nice um one of the last questions from nate and this is actually a question that we could have done a whole session on this the the fact that you found a gift in memory Mm -hmm. that you struggled with it and became superhuman at it right anyone could have done that with any particular thing it's not just about memory it's about taking something that you struggled with and not only becoming at least average or a little bit better becoming one of the best in the world is it possible for other people to find their gift and then become a, exceptional at it and how would you say that you did that like how did you become amazing at memory not necessarily the how you learned how to do it but what right. motivated you to want to become the best and what strategy do you think you used to become amazing at what you do? Well, listen, uh, um, that's a, uh, an amazing, and Nate is just on fire, man, blasting these questions. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so shout out to Nate again. But um, it, it, yeah, it definitely, I guess my driving factor for wanting to really master this, become a master at this is uh, it, at the end of the day, I love giving back. That's one of my number one or not. Well, yeah. One of my top, you know, human needs is just contribution, right? So I love giving back, as you know, like I, I, I do that on a regular basis. Every single Tuesday I'm out there helping out, feeding the homeless out here in my local area. I go to Mexico, I help out orphanages. Um, I just do a lot of giving back. A lot of I do a lot of things that I don't even post online. People have no clue about certain things that I do. And I'm sure you do as well in the entire GWALS community. But um, 
I, 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 I just love doing that. So that was my driving factor for wanting to master this. It wasn't for myself, right? At the beginning, I guess it kind of was, but even then I set a higher goal. I was like, okay, I need to do better in school. I need to do better at work. I need to do better in life because I need to set the example for my nieces, for my brothers and sisters, for, you know, uh, my future kids that are not born yet. Right. I don't have any kids yet, but they will come eventually. And when they do, I want them to say like, you know, I want them to look up to somebody and be like, okay, if he can do it, I can do it type of deal. Right. So that was really my biggest motivating, you know, reason for, for really kicking this up to another level. And then when I started to go to high schools and, and working with, um, with essentially strangers at that point in time, uh, these, these kids that were in that similar situation that I was in, like I was telling you earlier, um, I was like, man, I can, I can influence not just the people that are really close to me, but people that I've either never met before, or maybe we'll meet eventually later on down the road, but I can somehow touch them and affect them in a way that it's going to encourage them to want to go a different direction in their life and not head down the path that was set before them by maybe their friends and family members before them, but they can choose their own destiny at the end of the day. Right? So I, I, that was my really, my, my biggest driving factor for even wanting to get on this show because I don't watch TV, man. I don't, I don't sit down for hours on end watching TV. I don't do that. Um, so I, I, I was gonna, I was really throughout this process. Um, I was about to say no to them several times because of different reasons. But, um, I was, one of the reasons was because I was gonna, I, I said, I don't watch TV. I'm probably not even going to watch this show if I get on it. So why am I even doing this? And really the, the thing that I just kept hearing, kept replaying back in my mind was you're not doing this for you. You're doing this for others. And, and Sergio, here, here's what really cemented this in. Like once it was over, once it was shown on air and millions of people saw it, my little niece, she was there with me right afterwards. Uh, she came up to me. She's eight now. Uh, she, she came up to me and said, Tio Luisito, like, you know, you inspired me. And, you know, I, I want to be an astronaut now. I want to go and uh, achieve my goals. Like, you don't hear that from an eight-year-old growing up in La Puente, which is where I grew up. Like, kids that grow up in that area don't want to be astronauts, don't want to be, you know, scientists and then change and, and do, you know, invent something, right? At least the majority of them don't. Um, how do I know that? Well, because I grew up there, right? So uh, for her to come up to me and say that, that just solidified everything. That alone made it all worth it made, and make, it keeps making this entire process worth it. So if I can just keep helping out people, you know, of all ages, doesn't matter how old they are, you know, two year old kids to, uh, you know, two year old infants to, you know, 99 year old grandparents, whatever the case might be, uh, you know, I, I'll just keep doing that for them. So yeah, that's, wow, my that, that's incredible. And I guarantee there's thousands and thousands of people that you, that you affected like that. Thanks, so that, man. That's amazing. Now, that was a, a lot of the why you became a superhuman. What motivated you to want to become outstanding at something that you used to struggle in? What was the how? What did you specifically do to become outstanding at it? Because I know your, your training regimen, your hours that you're up <laughs> are pretty intense. You didn't study 10, 15 minutes a day memory every day. I you did. Grew, so <laughs> so I did, man. Behind the curtain of of how much you train, just how much, because people know you work hard, but not everyone knows just how hard you work. Right. I don't, man. Everybody at home, uh, you know, you don't have to work. You just lay in bed all day, watch TV all day, and you know, all your dreams will come true. <laughs> <laughs> no, like your brother and your sister were here, right? They were here in my place, and they they saw how hard I work, uh, you know, and I also, when I was in Canada, you guys were going to sleep, and I was still like, "Don't, I'll, 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 I'll go to bed soon, guys." You know, and I'm still laying up, lay up, at, you know, up at night, just working out on my computer, doing different things, and memorizing. And then you guys would wake up and see that I was still at it, right? Um, so, <laughs> and you guys would get mad at me. Your mom lectured me several times about that, but, um, but again, I have a strong reason why I'm doing it. But so the hows is, I, I really, I just, I break it down. I have a really strict. Uh, strict and loose at the same time. Flexible. I don't know. Is there such a thing as a flexible, strict schedule? I don't know. Um, possibly. <laughs> but it's flexible, but it's also strict, meaning I, I plan things out. I definitely do. However, I also set it in a way so that if other things arise, I can easily shift and move things around, right? But um, I, uh, I I plan things out, and 
I, I have a schedule where I divide it up into sections and I, I give myself scores and grades on each one of the sections, like how I did for that for that particular event or section. Um, and then, you know, and I, I, and I just work at it. So, for example, like aside from just memory, like let's say health, right, health and fitness. Uh, one of my goals right now is just to really put on a lot more weight and a lot of, you know, gain a lot of weight. But, you know, all this traveling that I did over the past several months kind of, made me lose a lot of weight just because I was out and about and I was at home. So right now I'm kind of reshifting that I'm already up several pounds from where I was at a few months ago. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it, so I'll break it down. Like, okay, right now I'm working out arms and then I got to eat this. I got to, you know, eat my, my several meal, meals a day. So I got to prepare for that. I'm, I'm doing meal prep. So I schedule that out. And if like, let's say at the end of the day, if I don't do everything that I set for that, for that section for health and fitness, then I might only give myself like an 80 out of a hundred. So I'll, I grade myself as if I was in school. I do, I do my own grades. Um, and you know, at the end of the week I just see, okay, man, I really need to improve on this area. I really need to focus more on, on, on my memory or my health or my this and that, right? Social life, whatever it is. Uh, and then I work on that for the next week. So, um, as far as like memory, how I, I got to this point, well, it was really just hammering. There's different events at this competi at these competitions, right? I think you alluded to that earlier. I never got around to it, but uh, the, so ten different events and uh, at the memory competitions, and each one of the events uh, is targeted toward a different area. So one's names, faces, one's playing cards, one's numbers, right? And so we have different events for different things. Uh, so I'll space it out, kind of like what we do with working out. You don't work out every single area of your body on one day, right? You want to space it out. Maybe you do, you know, arms and back one day, right? Maybe you'll do abs another day. You'll look, you do legs another day, right? You'll do shoulders and maybe, um, I don't know, shoulders and something else <laughs> another day. Uh, maybe you'll just go do cardio, shoulders and cardio another day, whatever. I don't know. Uh, Nick Marino is an expert at that, so you guys – Contact him for advice on that in that regard. But um, you know, so I, I took that and I translated that into memory. So I do names and faces and numbers one day. I'll do cards and maybe images another day, right? So and then I'll just focus on those and and at, after each one of the events, right? I'll do trials. So like let's say I'm doing numbers, right? I'll do numbers and I'll do like say five to ten minutes of numbers and then I'll take a break and be like, okay, how you know what did I do right? What did I do wrong? How can I improve on it on the next trial? Boom, and I'll go right back into the next trial. Okay, I got a hundred percent, but I think I could have done it faster. How can I improve on this? Okay, I should change this up. I could, I should make these images stronger. Um, so each time I do that, I always do a, a like an, an analysis of how I did it and how I can improve on it on the next one. So that's how I. That's essentially the how tos. It's just I set it up, I set a plan, and I get to it. Um, and I, you know, I do the work and then I just review. So I ask myself, how can I improve on it? And I just continue that process. It's just a cycle. And I, you know, I can, I just repeat that entire cycle until I become pretty good at it or, you know, uh, I become at the level where I'm comfortable at. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And measuring is so important. Keith Cunningham says, if you don't measure, you can't manage it. Exactly. So being able to measure it, you know, where you are and where you want to go, you can actually create a map around that. Um, mm -hmm. From when you started, what was your training like back then when you first started versus where it is right now? Has it increased, decreased, maintained steadily? Like the hours you train a day. Right. So, uh, I didn't know. It's, mm, it depends because once you have, first you, it's a process, right? So first you have to learn the language of, of being able to memorize a lot of this stuff, like the numbers and different things. But then once you learn the language, then at that point it's just to become fluent at it. So you can just, you know, go back and forth between languages. Like you and I, te puedo hablar en español bien fácil. ¿Por qué? Porque ya sé todas las palabras en español, right? I can talk to you back and forth in Spanish. Why? Because I know all the, the words, you know, that I, that I need to use in order to communicate. But, however, the learning of the words was kind of a, a tedious task at the beginning, right? So learning these words. So once you get that down, you spent hours doing that, then that's when, like, the, the actual training kicks in. Um, so I guess in the beginning, the majority of my time was focusing on just setting the foundation, setting, learning the words or learning this new language. And now it's just becoming fluent at it and how to be faster at this language, right. That I learned. So, um, but, uh, even after, after that, I, I definitely spent more time last year, 2015, because I was going to so many more competitions than I had ever done before. Um, so I spent a lot more time preparing and, and really honing in on my skills and improving every single one of these areas. Um, so yeah, I definitely, uh, put a lot more times, a lot of sleepless nights, um, not necessarily sleepless. I definitely slept, I slept and sleep is very important. I just did it, uh, differently than most people. <laughs> I, my sleeping pattern is different than most.
Yeah, your sleeping pattern is definitely definitely <laughs> different than most people. And yeah. it may not work for everyone, but what does a typical maybe week look like for you in terms of sleeping? I know you're up pretty late and then yeah. up pretty early. <laughs> uh, how many hours uh, on average are you getting? Like how many hours do you train a day? And right. then how many are you sleeping? Because you're crushing like 15, 18 hour days like on average while mm -hmm. most people sleep eight hours. You're sleeping like... <laughs> Between three and six, maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, it depends on the day. If I'm feeling good, I'll do a little six-hour day, a six-hour sleep day. Um, but uh, it depends. If I'm gearing up for a competition, I'll definitely spend more time training for that competition. Uh, right now, I'm kind of taking a break because I'm focusing more on business and taking advantage of the show. So um, I'm focusing heavily on that and sending on my websites and things of that nature, doing more videos, just providing more content. So. As far as training at this point in time, my week looks like I'm I'm, I'm of just a few hours a week, really, um, practicing a few names and faces here and there, a few numbers here and there. So maybe two to three hours right now a week, not much. When I was training, definitely a lot more up to, depends on the what competition I was gearing up for, but up to you know six to eight hours a day training. Essentially, it was a job for me at that point in time. But um, that was a day, right? It, it, so. It could have been like a 40 hour work week uh, and I was just training for 40 hours a week. Um, so it, it just depends on if I'm gearing up for a competition or if I'm off season, just relaxing and, and I'm doing other things. Um, yeah, so it, it, it varies as far as sleep. I, that also varies if, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm just in the zone, like when I was writing this book, I was sleeping very, very minimally <laughs> because I was literally <laughs> late, late up at night just working on this. Um, and it was really, I, I was mad when I had to go to sleep and it wasn't even, I could have, and I did, I, I stayed up like 48 hours, you know, in a row. Um, and I still did, I forced myself to go to sleep because I was like, hey, you still need to sleep, right? You still need to rejuvenate and, and, uh, you know, and, 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 and get to work, you know, after this, after a sleep cycle. But, uh, when I was gearing up for this, I just, I was so driven to finish it and, and uh, you know, to, so driven to want to put this out there that I didn't want to go to sleep. I was mad when I needed to go to sleep. Um, so it, again, it just depends on what I'm working on and, and if it's you know off season or whatnot. But right now, I'm I'm cranking in about six hours on average, six hours a day. That's not bad. That's <laughs> that's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I see you got the trophy back there actually in the background, which is awesome. You got it yeah. right there on display. Um, we got a couple more questions. Uh, we got one from Rachel, a little bit memory focused. What are your top three to five books on brain function and health and memory retention? And then you can also throw in what health regimen do you maintain for optimal brain function? Obviously, being a memory athlete, your brain is kind of your your weapon, right? So how do you keep it on maximum performance? So it's uh, Hot Cheetos in the morning. And then it's, uh, <laughs> I just played. don't do that kids. Um, all right. So, <laughs> uh, it's definitely a lot of this. It looks kind of, uh, disgusting, but <laughs> it's a green drink. Uh, you know, for those in the Tony community and the UPW community and, uh, well, and G Wallace community, you guys know that health is, is key, right? For everything that we do. So focus on your body, focus on your temple, take care of you. And then everything else kind of flows from that. Right. So I just, I do a lot of this, right. A lot of drinking green drinks and, and smoothies and, and blueberries. I do a lot of blueberries, strawberries, just berries in general. Uh, avocados are huge. Avocados help just overall brain function. I won't get into the science behind that, but overall brain function it has specific fatty acids in there that helps with that. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, so just overall, uh, I just I, I definitely shifted my my diet since the early days of me struggling with my memory, right? So a lot more uh, fruits and veggies and, and things of that nature. Now, as far as books, uh, there's this one really good one. I don't know if we yeah. might have heard it earlier. No, I just played. No, but uh, so books. There's two that are very similar. So this is kind of the talent code. Tony talks about this. I got this book before actually Tony started speaking about this up on stage. But if you go to UPW, you'll see Tony talk about this one, right? Daniel Coyle, he wrote the talent code. It's, it's a, essentially, uh, it's a miniature version of this book. You know, he, uh, Daniel talks about the other brain in, in the talent code. So this one is more science driven, more 
actual here's the research here's us performing these tests here's us seeing you know the brain cells and what happens when you put this you know substance in there and when you put this nutrient in your body so it's much more science so if you if you're if you lean towards that and i know everybody watching this is definitely a you know go getter and loves to learn and, 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 and right and take things to another level so this is a book that i highly recommend the other brain um this one by douglas fields and then the other one is focus I think you also have this one, uh, Sergio. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this one's a must read right here. Focus overall, or you might have it as like audiobook or whatnot. But uh, focus, it, it just teaches you how to, or how we focus and, and how we can take advantage of what our unconscious or subconscious mind does in certain situations. So these are the top three books that I would really recommend for for those of you that want to just learn more about the brain and how to not only stay focused, but how to really, uh, you know, improve your overall brain function. Talent code, the other brain and focus. <laughs> cool. And uh, this next question, maybe you can wrap it in a whole bunch of different things. I'll try and summarize it for you. How would you suggest a flexible memorization of a long presentation, like a two hour keynote? I know there's a lot of speakers that are going to be watching people that are, um, looking to speaking so you're obviously not going to memorize word for word a two-hour presentation you remember key points that's the first part of the question the second part is um, do you have any pra uh, practice or study techniques uh, for ultimate retention and then on top of that if maybe you want to summarize some key points of those two books and kind of wrap it all in together in kind of um, memorization techniques with study techniques and then summarizing what that book says yeah, so um, I'll try to keep this brief because I know where... your book too, actually, right? Because your book talks about how to memorize, how to remember names and faces. So you still got yeah. a little bit of time. You can go in on kind of summarize that whole thing all together. So, yeah, so, um, uh, so briefly, so uh, Rachel, amazing questions. Thanks so much. Uh, so everybody check out Rachel, Rachel Bellman. She's incredible. Uh, <laughs> so uh, speeches. A lot of people always ask me this, you know, I, I give speeches all around the world. I, I was recently in Australia doing a memory talk out there for, for the Alzheimer's Association, helped out with that. So <laughs> I know I'm the memory guy and people always ask me, how do I memorize this speech and how do I, and you kind of alluded to that right now as well. It's not necessarily that, I, you know, you do it word by word, but just like in chunks, right? So can I do it word by word? Can I write down an entire speech and memorize it word by word? Of course I can. At the USA Memory Competition, we have to memorize an entire poem, brand new poem, never been published, published before. And we have to memorize it word by word, punctuation included, right? If there's a period, we gotta put the period. If there's a capital here, you gotta put the capital. So everything has to be correct in order for, guess, for us to get the points that we need to get. Uh, so I can, I know how to do it, right? It's not that it's it's foreign to me. I know how to do it. It's, it's just that when I'm when I'm doing my talks, my own talks, um, and every person is different. If you want to completely memorize your speech, you're more than welcome to. However, for me, I don't like doing that. I, n I never have, really. Um, so how I do it is I, I, I do break it up into chunks. And um, even with that, once I break it up into chunks, I'm very flexible with this. So I have my stories and my, the different points that I want to make. But even that, I, I'll, I'll change things around. Like I've literally gone into a presentation, and this happened actually in Australia, where all the other speakers, they'll have PowerPoints and they'll have everything like pre-done and, and you know, and they're great presentations. Some of them sound a little robotic, but um, you know, overall, you know, great presentations. And and that's great, it works for them. It just, I don't like that style myself. And the organizers were like, all right, cool, you have your PowerPoint? I was like, nope. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you don't have your PowerPoint? You're not ready? I'm like, oh, I'm ready, right? I'm ready for this. It's just, I don't do PowerPoint and I don't have something pre-done. I just get up and I do it on the spot. Um, but you know, I do prepare mentally for it. It just it's not pre-done. So I, you know, I went up there and I'm just literally boom. The first thing I went up at, right after a few different memory people that w gave really dense information about memory. So like, I need to change it up, right? Because these people already kind of their brain energy is going down. So I got to change it up. So I got them standing up, you know, giving me each other massages and doing all kinds of different things, moving around, meeting new people. So doing things that. You know, somebody that had a pre-planned, predetermined plan for for the talk might have not been as flexible with doing right. They would just jump right into the presentation, and even with that, I completely I, that was a brand new talk I'd never given before in that particular order, and it worked for me again because I I was able to be flexible with my stories and different points I wanted to make. Right, so 
Um, how I do that, I essentially I just visualize, I kind of run it through my mind, like one, you know, maybe a story or a particular point that I want to make. And I'll run it through my mind and I'll visualize it and then I'll just get up and do it as if there's an audience in front of me and I'm talking to them, right? So I'll do it in my bathroom. I'll do it when I'm shaving my head. I'll, I'll do it when I'm just like, you know, in, in, in my living room um, in front of my whiteboards and I'm just, I pretend like there's a large audience and I'm talking to them and I'm correcting myself and I'm doing all these different things. So I'll do a section of that. Boom, cool. I have that kind of done. Um, and then when I'm driving, I'll also kind of just refer back to that and I'll see, okay, how can I clean that up? How can I, you know, make it better? So um, it's just a lot of that. It's just breaking it down into chunks. And then when I'm up ready to talk, I just kind of put those chunks into place and I'm very flexible. Sometimes I might not use stories that I worked on um, that particular day, but uh, I might do, use it another day, right? I just, I really feed off of the energy of the crowd um, when it comes to those kind of things. Because I've been, I've done talks where, I, very early on, where it, it was definitely, I knew exactly what I want to say when I wanted to say it. And then when I got there, the energy of the audience was off. And at the end of it, I was like, why? So I, I asked some of these kids, like, why weren't you guys as, uh, you know, connected with this information and some of my other groups? And they were like, well, sir, we already know all of this stuff, all the stuff that you taught. So I guess um, somebody else had already gone and taught them what I just taught them. So, uh, you know, if I would have been more flexible with it, I could have been like, hey, who here knows these techniques? Boom. Uh, everybody raises their hand. Cool. I can throwing something completely new, completely different, right? But because I was so like hammered in on, I want to do it this way, I wasn't as flexible. So after that, I, that's when I really just became flexible with it. So I know I'm the memory person. However, I don't memorize my stuff. I just kind of get a feel for the audience and then I just go off that and I have kind of chunks um, uh, with that. So hopefully that kind of helps out there, Rachel, in regards to speeches. Um, uh, and how to do that and it's just all about visualizing creating images creating stories and then storing them along routes that's kind of how i do that um as far as like these books the other brain um as far as learning so after every chapter i will stop and i will review the information i'll close my eyes and i'll visualize that right so i'll visualize what it is what stood out to me what i saw while i was reading and while i'm reading i'm visualizing what it is that i'm reading so I imagine like I'm actually going to make a movie out of this book and I'm picturing what it is that I'm reading as if I'm like the director or the producer. So I'm, I have all these different characters and I imagine like maybe I'm about to break the box office record, uh, you know, break Avatar's record or whatnot, right? So I have to make this huge cinematic motion picture and add, add as many animations and characters as I want. So I do that while I'm reading and then after the chapter is done, I will review. And then bef so for, before I move on, I'll review and then before I move on, you know, um, after the review, I'll kind of do another skim through of that chapter and then I go on to the next one. So that's kind of how I retain information from books. Um, so a quick example of say the other brain uh, and the talent code is there's, so we have a brain, right? And then we have these cells called um, the, our, our neurons. And then we have cells around there called glial cells. Now these glial cells, I'll get just a little scientific here, but I know you guys are smart and you guys get into it. Get into it. Right. Um, so we have these cells, glial cells, and what happens with these glial cells is they help support the neurons, right? They help support the neurons um, and, and make these connections stronger. So what happens is whenever you are, say, learning something new, there's an electrical impulse that goes from one end to the other. So, and, and this neuron is essentially bald. There's nothing around. There's no insulation. Imagine like it's a cable, right? A coaxial cable, like your charger, your phone's charger. Um, there's a copper cable inside of there, but there's a lot of insulation around there to make that signal, that charge to go through from one end to the other so your phone can charge. If that charger was like slid open, right, or if it was cut, you would not get a good signal. Your phone would not charge. Same thing with our brain cells. So if this is bald, it's not going to get a good signal. So what happens with the glial cells around there is they fire off something called myelin. Myelin wraps around the neurons and they strengthen, they act as insulators. So they make the signal go faster, smoother, and it reaches the endpoint so that it, the neurons can connect with one another. So that's essentially a, a you know a wrap up quickly of real real briefly of what these two books are for are, are about. Um, yeah, so and, and myelin, how do you build up on myelin? You just essentially do things over and over again. So you review things. That's where the review aspect comes in. That's why I, I heavily review my books. Uh, the things that I'm reading and things I'm consuming is because glia cells they work off of the receptors whenever uh they see connections being made right they see uh, the electrical impulses being ran through they're like okay this is working let's help it out a little bit right so that's the only way that the glia cells actually uh send the myelin is when they see the neurons actually working so 
Um, so th that's where review comes in. That's why I review heavily. That's how you get things from long term memory, short term memory to long term memory is by reviewing. And you kind of know now how that works is because of the Leo cells. So that's a you know, wrap up kind of what these books are and how I do those things. Yeah. Hopefully that answers the question. Very cool. Very cool. We actually have a question while you were explaining all that uh, from Kayla. Luis, where can I get your book? <laughs> Kayla. What's up, Kayla? So, book it is uh, online, Amazon. So, it's on KDP, meaning it's on Kindle. So, you can get it either on a Kindle or on your phone or on your computer. So, you go on there on Amazon and uh, get it that way. Or it's uh, physical copy is also available on Amazon. Right now, I have it at a discounted price. So, if you go on there, check it out, you get it at a much cheaper rate. I actually don't make money if you buy the physical copy right now. So, uh, yeah, go and support that. And, uh, yeah, that's. that's that's where you get Amazon. I'm gonna about I'm about to put it up on on iTunes and Google Books as well. So that should be up next week. Uh, but for right now, it's on Amazon. Nice. And I know you're getting into podcasting too. So tell us a little bit about that. I know you told us a little bit earlier where we can find you, but um, let's wrap up with how we can keep in touch with you. How people who have questions can contact you best. Uh, is it email through your website, Facebook message, Snapchat, mm -hmm. uh, at snap snap away. So, uh, yeah, amind.com is my main website, but Facebook, you know, send me messages. I'll respond, uh, hopefully in a timely manner. <laughs> I'm about to go on a little trip, so uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But, uh, yeah, Facebook, you know, email, uh, you know, you contact me. I have a forum on my website at amind.com where you can put, put questions on there, memory-related or whatever questions you have. Um, so it's under the memory training tab on there. Uh, you know, and I'll answer them. You can find me, you know, on Instagram, on Snapchat, you can snap me, whatever the case might be. However you want to reach me, you can. Uh, and yeah, I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Awesome. And just to wrap up, what's the next six to twelve months looking like for Luis? What's up? What's in the books? What's happening? I got to go back out to Canada, man. <laughs> That's yep. what I got to do. The last time I was there, I was there for like a day. And then I you like snowboarding again? Yeah, for real, man. Uh, for those that don't know, I was uh, I talked about it earlier, but I broke my rib um, when I was in Canada for New Year's. So I got to go redeem myself. I was snowboarding out there. <laughs> Dagmar Mountain. Forever remember that, man. But uh, it was an awesome, awesome time. We had an awesome time up there. But yeah, I definitely got to go back. Um, a lot more traveling. So um, I got to do a lot more traveling. I have Germany planned out this year. Germany, Costa Rica, going to Spain again. I love Spain. Toledo, Spain was amazing. Um, I'm going to Australia again. So those are some of the for sure. Tokyo, Japan, I'm doing that in April. Uh, Philippines. So just a lot more traveling and a lot more just growth, personal growth, and just helping other people grow and empower themselves. So um, I'm going to UPW in Florida. For those of you that are going, going to be there, just give me a shout out. Say hi to me. Um, you know, just come, yeah, just come say hi. So I'll be there at UPW. I'm pretty sure I'll be at uh, UPW in, in Dallas, in Texas. I think it's in Dallas. Um, so Texas. And GYLS, hopefully I'll be there if everything works out. We'll see. Um, I'm glad they changed it back to GYLS. <laughs> yeah. um, so hopefully I'll be there whenever that is. And and yeah, so just a lot more traveling and a lot more just teaching and, and helping out others. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time, for giving us all these insights in this last hour. I definitely learned a ton. I know a lot of other people are going to get a ton of value from this. Um, send us off with a closing message. How can we aspire to be a superhuman like you <laughs> listen guys just go out there reach for your goals like <laughs> i have this thing where well, a lot of people have said, said it very similarly but uh you know don't just pray upon it do that and work your butt off right so pray visualize do all that it's good do your vision boards um i have a you can't see it but <laughs> I, 2013 i wrote a check to myself for one hundred thousand dollars. I had no clue how, how I was going to do it. This was when I first started my company, while I was like kind of getting into my company or whatnot. And uh, I had no clue how I was going to do it. I wrote a check to myself. Obviously, I couldn't cash it because I didn't have that money in the bank. But um, I did that. And then uh, a few years ago, I did a show with National Geographic Channel. They didn't pick up that show, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't like it. The sh you know, and then I did a few other things, done documentaries, a few other shows. And then Superhuman, I guess, I, I told you guys about that. And then I got this $100,000 then. So, uh, you know, one show turned me down. Another show uh, gave me the money that I said I was going to get a few years prior to that. And 
right? So, but but it wasn't just because I put that check on my vision board that it, it became a reality. It was because I worked my butt off. So the thing that I like telling people is, you have your goals, you have your visions. That's amazing. That's incredible. Work your butt off, though. Connect with people, right? Our, Sergio and I were good buddies. We we go back and forth. We you know encourage each other. We just had a session the other day, and you know I'm giving him tips. He's giving me advice, and I'm like, hey man, you should do this, this, and that. Hey man, you should start up your own podcast. I did my podcast. Boom. This is how you do it, right? So we're we, we're workout buddies. We're workout partners, not just fit in like physical fitness, but going out there, making it happen, making moves. So connect with people that are not just playing on a level playing field but are doing things that are uh, at a different level than you're used to that are going to push you they're going to drive you and i connect with juan with omid with nick marino we're always snapchatting each other and sending messages right and um and that drives me that pushes me so connect with people and and uh, and, and work i mean that's one word to close this out is work man and, and you do that you're gonna and, and do the right things right do the right things give back contribute tony always says that the secret to living is you know it's, it's giving contribution so do that um so with that being said, quick shout out to the homie, Sergio Bendania. <laughs> um, Sergio, hey, hey, guys, you guys don't know this, but he works tirelessly to make all of this happen and and, and really put all these together. He has Caroline coming on, uh, Caroline coming on next week, and he has a lot more speakers lined up. He's, he's had so many speakers already, and that takes work, people. You guys don't realize that, the, like the lineup he has scheduled, these people like put together, like it, I, I'm in the speaking world, so I know how much you have to pay people to go and speak for these events and it's a lot of money there right and he's able to 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 get these high level individuals to take an hour out of the day to you know spend some time with you guys so uh you know big props to sergio for making that happen making these moves and running his own mission and giving you guys the ability to tune in and watch these videos so sergio just continue to run your mission bro and continue to make things happen and i know that you and i are going to be on stage sometime in the, in the near future, uh, you know, just helping out a lot of people out there. So thanks a lot, Sergio, for having me on and for continuing to run your your, your own mission, bro. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Luis. <laughs> I'll see you guys all next time.